Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. So today's episode is actually a patron-selected deck tech. Once a month, patrons get to vote on the commander that they'd like to see in an upcoming episode. The commander that gets the most votes wins. And the commander that they chose was Alesha who smiles at death. She's a 3-2 human warrior with first strike that costs 2 in a red. And whenever she attacks, you may pay Orzov Orzov. If you do, return target creature card with power 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. So Alesha can be a value engine, getting us small powered but valuable creatures still back. So the basic concept for the deck is an aristocrat style strategy where we get Alesha out, start swinging, get back some valuable creatures that create more creatures, fill the board, sacrifice creatures, and drain out our opponents to win. As always, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics to show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start things off with tactic number one, Death Awaits. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bauble, which we can pay two and tap and sacrifice to get a basic land into play tapped. Next up, we've got two of the diamonds with Marble and Charcoal, both of which come into play tapped and tapped for one of our colors. And Sphere of the Suns also comes into play tapped, and it can tap for any color three times. Next up, there's Star Compass, which comes into play tapped and can tap for any of our colors depending on our land situation. And then we're running two of the Talismans with Talisman of Conviction and Talisman of Hierarchy. Both Talismans can tap for a colorless or can tap for one of our two colors, but they deal one damage to us. And of course, we're running all three of our Signets with Boros, Orzov, and Rakdos. By paying one and tapping them, they add two of our colors. But now it's time for us to move on to tactic number two, Touch of Death. First up, there's Gorgon's Head, which is going to give Alesha Death Touch. Gorgon's Flail does the exact same thing, but it also gives plus one plus one. Both of these are fantastic additions to this deck because they help protect Alesha when she swings. First Strike is great, but First Strike with Death Touch is even better. With either of these equipped, in order to stop Alesha, they're going to block with a ton of creatures to actually kill her. These help get Alesha through, which can be huge for this deck. Speaking of that though, let's move on to tactic number three, coming through. First up, there's Kami of False Hope, which has Sacrifice Kami of False Hope prevent all combat damage that we dealt this turn. This is a repeatable fog that we can keep getting back. And preventing our own combat damage isn't really that big of a deal to us because we're not trying to win through combat damage. It's essentially a very flexible way that can actually help save Alesha when we need it to. We've also got some evasive equipment with Fleet Feather Sandals and Prowler's Helm. Fleet Feather Sandals is going to give Alesha flying and haste. And Prowler's Helm says, equipped creature can't be blocked except by walls. In Commander, there aren't too many decks out there running walls, so this is pretty much going to make her unblockable. Now, these are great at helping get Alesha through, but they're not quite as good as the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card out of her 99. And the Golden Pig of this deck is Key to the City. Key to the City is an artifact that costs two, and it has tap, discard a card, up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn, and whenever Key to the City becomes untapped, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. So this really helps our deck out in multiple ways. First up, this deck actually wants to discard cards so we can get the right creatures into our graveyard. Again, Alesha can easily recur them and get them back when she attacks. Speaking of attacking, this helps her get through as well. Again, protecting Alesha and making sure that she can get through is huge for this deck. On top of that, this can actually help us with card selection too, essentially becoming a loot for two mana. With all the ways that this helps our deck out, it has definitely earned the title of Golden Pig. But now it's time for us to move on to tactic number four, Enter the Ring. So some of the creatures that Alesha is going to bring back are going to bring something with them too. First up, there's Goblin Instigator, which makes us a Goblin when it comes into play. And then Sling Gang Lieutenant makes us two Goblins, and we can sacrifice a Goblin and target player loses one life, and we gain one life. Next up, there's Chittering Witch, which is going to make us three rats most of the time. And then Mogwar Marshal is going to make us a Goblin when it comes in, and when it dies too. Again, with an Aristocrat-style strategy, we want to have a ton of creatures for Sacrifice Fodder. So we're not quite done with tokens just yet. Let's keep things going in tactic number five, Small Memento. First up, there's Garrison Cat, which when it dies, we get a 1-1 Human Soldier. And then Hunted Witness makes us a Soldier with Lifelink when it dies. Next up, there's Doom Traveler, which when it dies, it makes us a 1-1 White Spirit Creature Token with Flying. And then there's Doom Dissenter, which makes us a 2-2 Zombie when it dies. Imperious Olgark is next, and it has Afterlife 1. 
Afterlife means that when this creature dies, you create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. So because Minister of Obligation has Afterlife 2, we get two of those tokens instead. But outside of creatures that care about when they die, we've got some creatures that care about when other creatures die. So now it's time for us to move on to tactic number six, life insurance. First up, there's Sifter of Skulls, which says, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 Colossal Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield it has, sacrifice this creature, add colors to your mana pool. So this essentially replaces our non-token creatures that die, and it also gives us some temporary ramp. And then Anax Hardened in the Forge says, whenever Anax or another non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 Red Seder creature token with, this creature can't block, if this creature had power 4 or greater, create two of those tokens instead. Now we probably don't have too many creatures in this deck that meet that 4 power requirement, but it's still going to be well worth including in this deck. And then Field of Souls says whenever a non-token creature dies, put a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. This is a fantastic effect, especially on enchantment, because it's going to be harder for our opponents to deal with. But finally we've got Requiem Angel, who works in a slightly different way. She has whenever another non-spirit creature you control dies, put a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So Requiem Angel can essentially replace any of our creatures, including our tokens, as long as they're not a spirit. But we're going to need some sacrifice outlets to take advantage of all this, so let's move on to tactic number 7, down and out. First up there's Carrion Feeder, which can't block, and we can sacrifice a creature for a plus plus one counter on it. And then Cartel Risk Grunt has, sacrifice another creature, Cartel Risk Grant gains protection with the color of your choice until end of turn. Demir House Guard can also protect itself because it has sacrifice a creature, regenerate Demir House Guard. Free sacrifice outlets are great, especially ones that can protect themselves. So we're also running Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, which has sacrifice a creature. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat gains indestructible until end of turn. If the sacrifice creature was human, put a plus plus one counter on Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. Next up, there's Altar of Dementia, which has sacrifice a creature. Target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. This can actually provide us a lot of extra value by milling creatures into our graveyard. And then Martyr's Cause says sacrifice a creature, prevent all damage to a creature or player from one source. On top of being a free sacrifice outlet, it can also protect Alesha. Another outlet that can protect Alesha is Dark Privilege. It's going to give her plus one plus one and sacrifice a creature, regenerate enchanted creature. And finally, there's Tooth and Claw, which has sacrifice two creatures, put a 3-1 red beast creature token named Carnivore onto the battlefield. But now we've got to talk about ways to get to all these great cards, so it's time for us to move on to tactic number eight, Draw and Ditch. First up, there's Faithless Looting, which is going to let us draw two, then discard two, and it's got a flashback for two and a red. And then Tormenting Voice lets us draw two by discarding one, and Throw Possibility does the exact same thing but at instant speed. Next up there's Cathartic Reunion, which lets us draw three by discarding two. And then Read the Bone says scry two, then draw two, you lose two life. Painful Truths can be even better if we've got the right mana for it. It has Converge, you draw X cards and lose X life, for X is the number of colors of mana spent to cast this spell. So at its best, it's a draw three, lose three for three mana. But we've also got some creatures that can help us out with Grim Horror Specs, Midnight Reaper, and Smothering Abomination. Grim Spec says, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, draw a card. Midnight Reaper does the same, but it's also going to deal one damage to us. One damage for one card is well worth it in Commander. And then Smothering Abomination says, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature, and whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. And finally, we're running Mentor of the Meek, which says, whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, draw a card. So this can even help us out with card advantage when tokens enter too. But now it's time for us to move on to tactic number nine, Deadly Value. First up, there's Taste of Karlov, which is basically a panharmonicon, but with death triggers. It says if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers initial time. On top of that, creature tokens you control have Vigilance and Lifelink. The amount of value that Taste can generate for us once we're set up is absurd. We're also running Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which says whenever it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life or X is your devotion to black, you gain life equal to life loss this way. This can be a fantastic creature for us to recur with Alesha to drain our opponents out. But another way to recur creatures comes with Whisper Blood Liturgist. And Whisper pairs very well with one of our tutors, Final Parting. Final Parting says, search your library for two cards, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So this can get us the right card into our hand and the right creature in our graveyard for us to reanimate. And of course, we're also running Diabolic Tutor, which is another great tutor for four mana. And once we're set up, Martyr's Bond can be a great target for these tutors. It's an enchantment for four white white, and it says, whenever Martyr's Bond or another non-land permanent you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a permanent that shares a card type with it. We're going to be sacrificing a ton of creatures with this deck, so it's going to be very hard for opponents to keep any of their creatures on the board. But we've also got some targeted removal with D-Spark, Oblation, and Crush Contraband. D-Spark is going to exile target permanent with converted mana cost 4 or greater. Oblation is going to make the owner of target non-land permanent shuffle into the library, then draw two cards. And Crush Contraband says choose one or both, exile target artifact or exile target enchantment. But now let's go through how we actually finish our opponents off in tactic number 10, Feeling Drained. First up there's Zillport Cutthroat, which says whenever it or another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. And then Cruel Celebrant does the exact same thing, but it also includes Planeswalkers too. 
Next up, there's Bastion of Remembrance, which does the exact same thing as Zulport Cutthroat, but it's an enchantment, and when it comes into play, we get a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. And then Vindictive Vampire is a slightly more expensive version of this, but it's also worth having in the deck. Falkenrath Noble costs the exact same amount of mana, and it says whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one life, and you gain one life. And then Judith the Scourge Diva gives other creatures we control plus one plus zero, and whenever a non-token creature we control dies, Judith the Scourge Diva deals one damage to any target. So this can ping down players and creatures too. And finally, we're running Corpse Knight, which says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. This deck is going to have a ton of creatures entering and leaving the battlefield, so every single time they do, they're going to drain our opponents for a lot. But now let's tackle price and see how our deck stacks up. The average Alastra EDH rack deck is going to set you back $243.96. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.38. And if you want to see the breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. But now let's move on to some reasonable upgrades for this deck. First up, let's add in Master of Cruelties by taking out Judith. Next up, let's add in Pitiless Plunderer by taking out Requiem Angel. And then let's add in Spawning Pit by taking out Dark Privilege. Next up, let's add in Paul and Vulamog by taking out Tooth and Claw. And then let's upgrade this deck with Lightning Greaves by taking out Kami of False Hope. And finally, let's add in Swiftfoot Boots by taking out Fleet Feather Sandals. And with that, this episode is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So make sure that you comment below and let me know what your thoughts on this deck tech are. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.